Hello everyone. So most of you are always asking me like make a video about the uh, studying masters in Netherlands. What are the requirements? I made a video about uh, masters in Germany like the admission requirements for masters in Germany. So that's why I thought like why not make a video about masters in Netherlands. So first of all the going into the, directly to the point the main thing is you will need like a TOEFL or a IELTS which is basically like a English speaking requirement to prove that you speak English fluently. So the cutoff for most universities in Netherlands, uh, if you go to individual websites, is IELTS score of greater than or equal to 6 or 6.5 and TOEFL is always like greater than or equal to 90. It's like a cutoff. And GRE is till last one or two years back, it was almost optional for every university. But recently many universities are getting overwhelming number of students uh, as I see. So that's why they have made like uh, GRE as like most universities are adding it as an added requirement to pass certain cut cutoff. And whatever I've seen in TU Delft and other universities, uh, it's like I think around greater than or equal to 315. Rarely it is 320 which is mostly in good uni US universities. But here, some courses in specific universities, not all, have greater than or equal to 315 as a requirement for the GRE cutoff. And apart from that, uh, obviously you will need like a good SOP, statement of purpose. Uh, so in one of the videos, I talked about SOP, which you can see flashing on the screen. Although it does not detail, I'll make a detailed video because in the past two years, I have been writing answers in Quora and people always contact me about like to check their SOP or LOR. So I have some time, I allocate some of my time to check through these SOPs and in the last two years there have been like 10 or 20 people uh, to whom I have uh, given some of my time and checked their SOP obviously for free uh, just like to help them out and uh, they also found benefit in it and I felt happy that I could do some service. So I will make a detailed video on that later and for now just remember it's like a statement of purpose or a motivation letter which is like uh, you make a statement to the admissions committee of the university like why are they going to uh, choose you or what's the reason that they are going to hire you or admit you and what value you will give to the university and what you want to achieve by joining the master's program for that particular university. And finally you will need a LOR which is like the letter of recommendation. Normally it's they ask for two but some universities ask for three so it depends and what it means is like they recommend your candidature for that university as a good candidate and normally in case of two if you are working already working after bachelors then it's like one for uh, from the company one from the professor the university where you graduated where you did your bachelors uh, or undergraduation i don't know what you call the terminology is different in india and abroad so yeah so that's the thing and if they ask for three then everything is mentioned in the specific website you can go to each university website you don't need to hire a third party or someone to help you with that it's very simple everything is digital nowadays and considering the current situation now even digital promotion is getting more and more uh, traction so everything is digital and just fill that and go to their websites see the procedure send everything scanned versions of all these things and everything is okay and finally the cgpa or the cumulative grade point average so talking about indians uh, i mean this video is mostly for non-europeans obviously but uh, i mean most of the things that i'm touching on is like that so if you are from India, then the grade point scale is same, like 0 to 10, which is same in Netherlands. Only difference is here, the passing is 6. If you need to score above 6 on a scale of 10, and ideally people are between 6 and 8, and greater than 8 is very rare, which is considered a distinction in Netherlands. So, 
it varies from country to country so if you take on a 10 point scale just like we have in india then most programs in most universities have a very lower threshold of cutoff which is like greater than or equal to 6 or 60 uh, percent to get admit there like pass the cutoff and some have greater than or equal to 7 so common is greater than or equal to 7 or 7.5 which may be difficult sometimes but most of the time is greater than or equal to 6 and one good thing you have to note is that your whole CGPA or the overall CGPA till the semester when you are applying during your bachelor's is not that important um, I mean it is important to pass this cutoff but even if you have a higher score you may get rejected if you have less grades in specific subjects so by specific subjects I mean suppose you are applying for computer science then I would say like the courses which are related to computer science you should have better grades even though your CGPA is a little bit low although it is above the cutoff for example your computer science subjects may have like grades between 7 and 8 out on a scale of 10 and your overall CGPA may be 6.5 you might still get an admit whereas a person with computer science grades very low and overall CGPA greater than 7 may get a reject this happened with many candidates who contacted me recently I talked with them and uh, one of the guy was from NIT in Rauke in India from NIT India and he had a CGPA greater than equal to 8 but his subject related CGPA for which faculty or branch he was applying for was a bit low so he got a reject from I think one university and the other Dutch university accepted it so you need to keep this in mind I gave a talk uh, in the in an university in India will help you a lot you can check this video where I have given timestamps because this video is too long which will give you an idea like what are the factors that you need to consider when you apply to a European University and what are the fees, what things you need to take into account, keep in your mind and how you need to prepare and uh, another thing is also about the scholarship so here in this video I won't talk much about the scholarships but for the scholarships I am already preparing a video and I will put that video soon which will talk about uh, the scholarships that you can avail as an Indian and also as non-Europeans for whom the tuition fees are really really high so for masters you pay around uh, currently the technical master courses are like 16,000 euro they vary between 16,000 euro to 18,500 euro per year which is really staggering high fees uh, if you compare to Europeans, I mean slowly I think because of the traction and the popularity of the European universities uh, they are inching very close to the US universities uh, which for years back they are already charging uh, higher fees and apart from that a good thing about Netherlands is that the language is most more than 99% of the people speak English and it's like from their childhood they learn English as the second language uh, apart from Dutch so that's not a big issue and there are many international companies for different types of uh, field that you study masters in so you are very likely to get a job easily without knowing the local language and another advantage is that I think almost 99.5 or 100% of the courses uh, master courses are in English nowadays just to have that promotion for the international students and the environment itself is already conducive and suitable for anyone to fit in easily because you don't have that language barrier in between you and your uh, university of the peers so I knew some of my friends back from I think one was from India one was from uh, Sri Lanka I think I think so I don't remember when I was doing masters in TU Delft in computer science from 2015 to 17 you can check back my previous videos if you want to know more about me so I did my masters from 2015 to 17 and then after that I'm doing PhD in Open University Netherlands which is in the south of Netherlands and I am also active during my PhD I also go to TU Delft Frankfurt University uh, DIPF Frankfurt for some project to meet some project partners and my research so my research is inter-country and inter-university and that's why I'm still associated and I'm already lived in Netherlands for more than four and a half years 
so that's why i thought why not make a video and help you out all to share my experiences and also give an idea like if you're choosing to do masters in netherlands like what are the requirements you need to spec uh, get and one thing i forgot to mention is in the cgpa you need to check specific courses in specific universities depending on the specific origin country you will have different because every origin country has different scale like india has 0 to 10 pakistan may have a different scale sri lanka may have a different scale so for indians i remember most universities have a cut off of like greater than or equal to 6 or 60 percent but again it varies it changes every year depending on the incoming students the population the number so you should check the website of each university for that particular program and be sure about that don't send those questions in the comments below like uh, what is the cutoff and all these things because it will vary for the university it's better for you to have a look on those websites the Erasmus exchange program is a good program because uh, you can study for free so it's like a scholarship you study you can study in different European universities so for example in the first year you may be in TU Delft and in the second year you are in KTH Sweden or maybe in Norway so I have seen many people who get that from non-European countries and they study for free and they also enjoy intercultural experience of different European countries which help you a lot when you apply for jobs or PhD later and one thing you should remember that in Netherlands there are two types of universities one is applied science and one is uh, I think if you google it you will find a lot of info I will make a short video later and the second one is the technical or research universities which is like TU Delft or maybe TU Eindhoven TU means Technische University in Dutch so it's they are like the research universities and where you have research and applied universities are more in in if you tell it in short then applied universities are more like the more application based so they prepare you for the job market so if I understand it correctly then it's like if you want to work later you can still manage with applied science degree instead of a TU degree although you can have a TU degree which is always highly reputed but applied science prepares you exactly for the job market not ideal for research if you want to do research then I would highly recommend you to study in a TU uh, not in applied science universities so uh, you can find a lot of rankings like QS rankings, Times Now Higher Education rankings. I think there are like 5 or 10 Dutch universities in the top 200 ranks. And TU Delft, TU Eindhoven, Leiden University, Wageningen University of Applied Sciences is very famous for agriculture and all. And recently I was in contact with a person who got full scholarship in the Wageningen University for Agriculture. I'll make a short video soon with him, maybe via Skype, considering the current situation. You know everyone is suffering and Erasmus Rotterdam it's also a very good university for MBA MBA courses are mostly one year I'm not going to talk about MBA now it's only for masters and you can also do masters in Erasmus and talking about the duration uh, so there's like two year courses one year courses so how do you choose we had a short discussion although it is not conclusive you can check the video flashing on the screen about how do you decide whether you go for a two year masters or one year masters Although if you want to do a PhD then I would highly recommend that you choose a two year masters otherwise the ECTS or the European credits that you need to achieve after you finish masters will not be sufficient to apply for a PhD. So that's the only thing you should keep in mind. And what do people study in Netherlands? So mostly it is famous for civil and architecture because they are ranked in top three in the world, top two or top three. But they are also famous for civil, architecture, aerospace, chemical. There are a lot of petrochemical industries around Rotterdam and other cities. And uh, civil, aerospace, chemical, computer science. Computer science is recently gaining a lot of traction because of the research and the environment and a lot of stress on emphasis on innovation although Netherlands is a very small country but they do a lot of research and innovation if you want to see how is the TU Delft and Erasmus Rotterdam uh, you can see the videos flashing on the screen I had uh, experienced them like I went there uh, although I was studying in TU Delft obviously but I don't have too many vlogs but still you can have an impression of how these universities look I would highly recommend you to watch the video about 10 things that you should know about masters in Netherlands. That video is 
slowly gaining popularity because I have mentioned it in very detail about the 10 things that everyone must remember and take into account before applying for a master's and after coming to Netherlands. And apart from that, I would highly recommend you to study in Netherlands uh, and make it as your future master's destination. Although you have very high fees, uh, that's my opinion. And I hope you like this video. If you like this video, don't hit the, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the YouTube algorithm to gain visibility. And don't forget to share the video, help each other out. Uh, share with your friends and help them out who want to do masters in Netherlands and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet it helps me a lot and gives me motivation to make these videos to help you out all so till next video I would go before that I want to say I'm Sambit Praharaj I have lived in Netherlands for more than four and a half years and I make videos about studying and living in Netherlands and also studying and living in Europe Recently there are other playlists, check different playlists to get an idea about masters, PhD, traveling, shopping and also some videos on Estonia, Germany, France, Belgium and many more are coming soon. So till next video, bye bye, peace.